Hello from SlideNet and hello from Weaves. What's up folks? This is Weaves back again over here. I'm in this video. I'm going to show you guys how to do the relative layout using Java code. In the last video, I discussed about the theoretical stuff behind that blah blah blah, right? So in this video, let's actually get into action and get this thing running. So here, I have my source folder inside this project which is called relative layout in code. Again, I have written nothing inside. This is whatever Android has created by default. I'm using Java devel Android developer tools over here. So I go to my main activity. So this is where I need to write all the code for making my relative layout using Java code. So first let me remove this method which is for the menu. Control S for saving stuff. Minimize this window on the left side. Alright, so first, first step is to create the view and view group objects as per the last video which we guys discussed. So first let me make the object for relative layout over here. I'll call it main. Then I need to make my edit text. There will be two of them. One is the username uh, value which you enter over here and the other is the password value which you enter over here. I'm going to call them the same thing. I'm going to call this uh, username value and password value. Then again there is this message which says please log in first. I'm going to call that as message. Then there is a username and there is a password. right? So let me uh, go and make some text view for that. I'm going to say text view. I'm going to say message, username and password. right? Last but not the least, I have this button which says login over here. Now if you guys see there is this login failed over here. Now remember, based on the, what the user enter values over here and it clicks login, maybe there is a web service that will authenticate that value or maybe it will be corrected from a ch checked from a database to check if the value is relevant or not. Now since I have not discussed about databases or cloud based storage so far, I am not going to uh, implement this part about username and password which says login failed or successful. So in short, we won't consider this for now. We are going to simply take this button which says login. So here, I am going to go down and say button login. Alright, at, th at this point you guys have noticed this for long enough. It says a lot of errors over here. I am going to just press control 1 on this. Import relative layout. So all the necessary imports have been made. Now remember, we have just created references for each of them. Now what I am going to do here inside my code, whatever code I am going to write is actually going to be inside this on create method. right? So first let me in initialize each of them by saying main is new relative layout. I am going to uh, pass a reference in of this inside. Now what does this mean? This is a reference to this main activity. Now remember, main activity extends activity activity extends context and all these constructors require a context object inside now if you guys uh, don't believe me on this one just take a look over here i'll say username value which is my edit text equals to new edit text and there you can see it says context context so context is unrequired attribute over here right so for the context i'm going to pass simply this which is a subclass and subclass right so here again i'm going to initialize all of them the same way all right so at this point i have initialized all my uh, view and view group objects which you guys can see pretty simply over here Alright, so as you guys notice over here, it's getting very messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these initializations inside a separate method. I'm going to just control X, cut that, right? Create a method over here, which is which will be called init. Yep, private void init. And inside this method, I'm going to paste the stuff, whichever I created. And then I'm going to call this init method simply above. Now what this does is makes the on create method look pretty clean. All right. And now this init is done. Now for each of these fields, we have to initialize each of them separately. Like for the example, the, uh, this, the second step, if you guys remember, we have to define the width and height for each of them, right? So first, let's define the width and height for the relative layout over here. If you guys remember, the width and height are defined inside an object called layout params, right? So let's go and make that. Uh, if you guys remember, layout params is an inner class inside your relative layout. Now this class will uh, enable you to create an object. I will call this main dimensions, all right? Now what this main dimensions object will have is the width and height for your relative layout. So let's go and do that over here by saying equals to new relative layout dot layout params. As you guys can see here in the constructor, it asks for two parameters. One is the width and height, which are both integer values. I'm going to select this one. All right. So for the width, uh, if you guys remember, the width is going to be uh, match parent and match parent for the relative layout because it is the root layout. So for match parent, now where is that value stored in Java? Well, simple. It is inside this class called layout params dot match parent right it's the same layout parent uh, layout params class which you are using right now and layout params dot match parent again for the height i'm going to say layout params control shift f to format stuff all right so at this point what we have done is we have done nothing great we have simply created this object called main dimensions which holds two integer values one is the width which is match parent and one is the height which is also match parent now remember we need to set this width and height 
for this object main right now we have not done that so far because remember this step and this step are not related to each other in any way all right now if if you guys are confused about this import it we, there is a simple way of writing this let me show you that as well here i can go to the top and as you guys can see it says import android dot widget or relative layout or layout params it's been imported so we don't need to use this uh, namespace of relative layout over here we can directly write layout params when you do that import like that and still no issues right that's working perfectly so here next step is to actually set that width and height for that relative layout for that i'm going to use the statement which is going to say main dot set layout params and here i'm going to pass my main dimensions inside and we are done right so at this point what we have done in this step is set the relative layout main object to contain this width and height which are stored inside this object main dimensions which is over here right now we need to repeat this same step for all these user interface controls so one by one let's go ahead and initialize each of them and we need to also set additional properties so first let me do one thing first let me make this a uh, one which says please log in first for that i'm going to make a separate method over here which is going to say create message text view now what this will have is this is going to initialize this text view which say which has message over right here there you can see this message this is going to contain our text this text view will contain that text all right so first let me go and uh, initialize all the stuff for this i need to give a width and height for this uh, text view please log in first right if you guys see the width is wrap content the height is also wrap content so let's go and uh, do that with the help of a layout params object i'm going to say layout params i'm going to call this message dimensions is again new layout params all right so here i have created my message dimensions uh, object which is going to hold this wrap content and wrap content for this object which says please log in first so let me again uh, set this dimension on that object if you guys remember this is our text view which is message right i'm going to simply say message dot set layout params and here i'm going to set the message dimensions for that right so there we go we have set our uh, object property now now next thing we need to do is we need to set this text which is actually which says string uh, please log in first so here i'm going to simply say message dot set text and i'm going to simply say please now there's one more there are some more things which we need to do for example the text color is white the background color is black probably so we'll do that later all right now as far as the rules are concerned you guys can notice something that define rule for each let me show you this step now for this uh, text view which says please log in first all right now if you guys notice this text view it sticks to the left side of the parent and it also sticks to the top side of the parent remember there is a margin over here don't worry about the margin so much all right it is sticking to the left and the top so let's go and enforce that rule programmatically here all right so first i'm going to use this object message dimensions which is the layout params for that text view and this object is the one which is going to add rules all right so here i'm going to say message dimensions dot add rule so there you guys can see it says int verb right now what is this int verb let's see how what that looks like i'm going to use the relative layout class over here which has the constants for that align parent left over here right here there there you go so that is done so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this method create message text view called right below the init method over here by saying create and then i'm going to add this text view please log in first to the relative layout by saying main dot add view add the text view right that name of the text view is this one which is say which says message so i'm going to go here and put message over here and it is al also asking for a layout params object now remember the layout params object for that text view that is what is needed over here because you need to associate that text view and its constraints which are defined inside this params object so here if you guys notice uh, it is called message dimensions over here so i'm going to go ahead and add that object over here by saying message dimensions all right so this message dimensions is actually private inside uh, this method we need to actually take it outside so that we can make it public right so here i'm going to take this uh, message dimensions outside right here all right so at this point there's only one small change that needs to be done if you s notice the set content view method here here we are simply passing an xml resource right to indicate that the appearance is contained inside this xml file but now what we have is uh, all our appearance is defined inside this relative layout object main right this main object so here i'm going to take this set content view and i'm going to simply write main inside the bracket so now if you guys uh, save this and run this you should see this please log in first on the screen so let's see how that looks all right so here my emulator is running and as you guys can see the please log in first text is aligned to the left of the parent just like we wanted and it is there on the screen right so we have not used any xml structure over here you guys can see that clearly it's all in java code 
Alright, so in the next video, we are gonna continue further from where we have left. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, comment, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next bit. Have a nice day.